Remember school? If I asked you to describe your school experience in three words, what would they be? For me, it would be fun, friends, and learning. Well, here's a question to think about. How much do we actually remember from school? Let's take a quick quiz. Let's start with chemistry. What's the atomic number of calcium? Not sure? It's 20. Let's try physics. What's the value of acceleration of gravity, also known as g? It's the thing that keeps bringing us down back to the Earth. Not sure? It's 9.8 meter per second square. Don't worry, I had to look it up as well. How about math? What's the value of pi? You may know this answer. It's a little bit popular. Yes, it's approximately 3.14. Now let's consider an everyday scenario. Ever been introduced to someone and before you know it, you're no longer able to remember her or his name. Why is that? Why does our brain retain some information and forgets other? Forgetting is almost immediately the nemesis of memory, as psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus discovered in the 1880s. Ebbinghaus pioneered landmark research in the field of retention and learning, observing what he called the forgetting curve, a measure of how we forget over time. In his experiments, he discovered that without any reinforcement or connections to prior knowledge, information is quickly forgotten. Roughly 56% in one hour, 66% after a day, and 75% after six days. Now that's a lot of information forgotten too quickly. The question is, can we support our memory to retain information longer? And what can be done to preserve the hard work of teaching? Welcome back to this micro-learning series called How Learning Happens, based on the book called How Learning Happens, Seminal Works in Educational Psychology and What They Mean in Practice by Paul A. Kirshner and Carl Hendrick, published 2020 by Rutledge. My name is Nidhi Sachteva and I am the creator and narrator of this micro-learning series. Our previous micro-lesson was about cognitive load and problem solving. In that lesson, we learned that it is best to present information in small bites to support long-term learning. In today's micro lesson, we are going to talk about the depth of processing new information and how it relates to long-term retention. Let's get started. Back in 1968, Atkinson and Schifrin developed a model to explain memory and retention. They called it the multi-store model of information processing. According to this model, Information enters our brain from one of the sensory registers, for example, our eyes, ears, mouth, nose, or skin. The model also suggested that there is a limited short-term store, what we now call short-term memory or working memory, and a virtually unlimited long-term store or long-term memory to retain information. But it couldn't properly explain why some things were learned and retained better than others. To this end, in 1972, Craig and Lockhart proposed an alternative framework for human memory research. They called it the depth of processing model, and it was based on the idea that perception involves the analysis of stimuli at a number of levels. They divided the levels of processing in two main stages, shallow and deep. Shallow processing focuses on superficial features of the incoming information. It involves structural analysis, that is, how something looks like, and acoustic analysis, which means how something sounds like. These levels of processing can create weak memory traces and hence lead to short-term retention of information. On the other hand, deep processing involves semantic processing of the incoming information. This means that our brain encodes the meaning of the stimulus which in turn can link it to previously stored knowledge in our brain, leading to stronger, more persistent traces and better retention. This is one of the reasons why we remember more from a lecture when we handwrite our notes versus type them out on a laptop. 
most learners today can type as fast as the teacher talks and thus the student can type a verbatim transcript. In essence, the words go in their ears and out of their fingers and they process the information only at the phonemic level, that is at the shallow processing level, structurally and acoustically. But if they use pen and paper to write lecture notes, they are required to paraphrase, abbreviate and extract the important things that are being said, that is, separate the wheat from the chaff. As such, they are more deeply processing what is being said and thus they remember and learn better and longer. We as teachers should strive to have our students process information as deeply as possible and thus should make use of those techniques and pedagogies that facilitate, stimulate and support long-term learning. Let's look at some strategies. Encourage your students to explore what is being studied on their own in order to elaborate on it. This elaborative encoding supports learning and also increases their retention by constructing a richer set of integrated memories. Encourage students to think about the distinctiveness of what they have learned. How is this concept, principle, strategy similar to or different from other concepts, principles, strategies they have learned before? Relate the new information to pre-existing knowledge. This helps the learners form connections between new information and what they already have in their mental schemata, which allows them to process it at a deeper level. Include activities that focus on application. When a learner is encouraged to interact with what she or he is learning by applying it, knowledge retention is enhanced. Encourage students to put information in their own words. For example, write a summary or paraphrase what they've learned. Have them create a concept map of what they've learned. Have students talk about it with someone else. All this can help improve knowledge retention. Encourage the learners to relate the new information to their own personal experiences. This creates more persistent memory traces and hence improves knowledge retention. Encourage your learners to imagine what it is they can do with the learned information. Being able to identify situations where one can transfer the learned content helps boost information retention. Remember, the greater the depth of information processing by the learner during learning, the better it will be retained and remembered.